real soft right there. If you've ever been laying face down in the dirt wondering what happened to your front tire, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, everybody. Boom, cut to that, all righty. Thanks for tuning into TheLoneWolf.com. My name is Drew and today we're going to be going over mountain bike tires and giving you guys some insight into making the correct selection for you dependent on your terrain, riding style, and what you're trying to get out of your ride experience. So as you can imagine when it comes to tires there is an infinite number of possibilities not just from all the brands available but from the brands themselves. As an example, we've got three Maxxis Minion tires here. We've got a wire bead downhill dual ply Maxxis Minion DHF here. We've got a Max Grip folding bead DHF with EXO protection. And then we've got a double down Max Grip 2.5 WT Maxxis Minion DHF. It's crazy, we know, and buying a tire can definitely be confusing, and we wanna try to prevent you guys from buying a tire that might seem like a screaming deal, but will end up having you screaming out on the trail. So as I said, we've got three very different Maxxis Minion DHF tires in front of me, and where we're gonna start this video is from the foundation, essentially the skeleton of the tire, and that's gonna basically be the, the carcass and the sidewalls. You've got a couple of things to look at when you're looking at a tire. You've got the number of plies and the threads per inch or TPIs. Now most tires are going to have 60 or 120 TPI depending on the application. 60 TPI is going to be found in your heavier, thicker, stronger and less sensitive tires, um, a la Maxxis Minion's DH tire. Whereas 120 TPI is gonna be found on some of the thinner, more supple trail tires and uh, gonna give you a little bit more feel and sensitivity off of features, but it's also gonna be more susceptible to punctures, tears and flats. Obviously that is where technology starts to come in to change how those 60 or 120 TPI tires perform. And that's what we're gonna get into next. So when looking to make a tire decision, you can either buy a folding bead or a wire bead. Traditionally, most tires are gonna be coming in a foldable bead these days. The um, overbuilt heavy wire bead days are, are usually reserved for downhill bike applications and maybe some really aggressive e-bike or enduro guys who really need the stiffness of that wire bead. The folding bead tires uh, that Maxxis uses, for example, are gonna be a wound aramid and offer plenty of strength and durability for most applications are in the most extreme downhill and aggressive riding scenarios. So when it comes time to think about TPIs after you've made the decision on what type of bead you're gonna want, uh, you could think about a silk shirt versus a Hanes Beefy Tee that you find at the truck stop. They're both gonna cover your nipples, but they're gonna do it in a very different way. Now a 60 TPI dual ply tire is going to be the Hanes Beefy T. It is not going to be very soft or supple. It's not going to give you the little finer nuances. Whereas a 120 TPI single ply tire is going to conform around rocks, roots, and give you a smoother ride and do a, just a, a nice job of conforming around the terrain. The benefit there is obviously traction. Um, you're not going to have the line deflection and get bounced. The downside is you are more susceptible to punctures and pinch flats and other sorts of tire and wheel damage from that thinner tire. Price and ride quality are definitely going to be two variables when it comes to looking at the TPI and that sidewall bead stiffness. Another thing that's going to start coming into play is the sidewall protection. Along with running single or dual ply for more or less sidewall stiffness, you're going to start getting into technology which will be the marketing sounding confusing terminology that all brands have. So on this Maxxis Minion for example, we've got EXO protection. 
What Maxis means when they say exoprotection is that there is a rubberized treatment to the sidewall of this tire and that's gonna make it more durable and more resistant to puncture and abrasions as they're encountering tree roots, stumps, or sharp rocks. Here in Central Oregon, for example, we've got a lot of embedded lava rock, and as you're kind of twisting and trying to ride between that rock, the sides of the tires are coming in contact with very sharp corners and edges. So an exo-protected tire is going to last better and give more protection here on that sidewall. Obviously, the downside to strength when it comes to tires is weight. So the more robust tire construction you have, obviously the, the heavier the tire is going to be and also the less supple or sensitive it is. Now an exo protection tire is pretty, I don't want to say low, but it's definitely not a big burly DH or double down casing tire. So moving up from the exo protection is the exo plus tire. And essentially what the XO Plus tires do is take that sidewall protection and add to it with their Silk Shield technology, which is a bead to bead coverage. So you're now essentially getting that XO Plus treatment on the side plus the Silk Shield over the top of that. And essentially what that means is that your protection against penetration from sharp objects, sticks, rocks, etc is going to be improved slightly. You're gonna have that barrier that is now gonna prevent that tire from, or I should say alleviate the chances of that tire being penetrated by something sharp, causing a flat, cut, tear, or otherwise damaging your fresh tire. Moving on from the XO and XO Plus, you move into the double down casing. So Max has created the double down technology to be a slightly lighter and more sensitive version of their downhill tire without the weight and sort of muted feeling. Now this has a two ply 120 TPI sidewall and uses a butyl rubber sidewall insert. The butyl rubber sidewall insert adds stability as well as protection to the tire. So uh, the, the real idea behind that is when you are you know, casing a jump, landing off of a drop onto you know, ground or sharp edges, if you're hitting roots at full speed, or if you're in berms you know, and you're getting massive G-forces, that butyl insert will protect as the tire compresses and squishes down. It will also give some more sidewall support, uh, much in the same way that people run tire inserts to give that, that support. The butyl inserts in the tire sidewall itself act as a built-in stabilizer for vertical impacts as well as twisting forces. This tire again is not going to be as damped or muted of a ride compared to a full-on downhill tire, which is going to be a two-ply 60 TPI construction. So as you guys remember, 60 TPI is going to be heavier, stronger, stiffer, and um, essentially a more robust build tire. Now the reason that is is that 60 TPI the threads are thicker per inch than the 120 TPI which has the thinner threads per inch. So when it comes time to making a selection for your bike there is not a huge weight difference between a double down or a full-on downhill tire um, but where the difference is going to be is in the ride quality uh, specifically from the sidewall and kind of under tread. So 220 TPI layers versus 260 TPI layers is going to give a, a very big difference of feel. So what you may want to consider doing is running the DH casing in the rear and maybe a double down up front. That way, you know, where most of your weight is, where more, you know, heavier impacts come, where more of your G-forces are generated in a corner, you could run a stiffer, heavier tire, but run a slightly lighter and thinner tire up front. That way you can maintain traction, stay on line, and get a little bit more hand feedback on exactly what the front end of your bike is doing. One of the last things you're gonna want to consider before we even get to the tread patterns is the rubber compound. Maxxis has a few different options. 3C here denotes three compounds of rubber. They have a dual compound and single compound available as do most brands. And typically what happens in multi-compound tire applications is that there is a thicker or, or a, 
a firmer tire compound at the bottom, which lays a solid and firm foundation. Then you've got a slightly softer rubber that is usually run halfway up the knobs in the center. So you have a little bit better rolling speed. And then the side knobs are gonna have a very soft, grippy rubber. And that's gonna really ensure that you get the most hook cornering traction. And you want to make sure that, you know, if you're out at the shop and you just twist on the knobs, you can turn them and see how fast they rebound and come back to shape. A tire that rebounds slowly is going to stay conformed to your corner rather than wanting to twist as soon as it's on the ground and, and try to stand you back up or deflect off objects. So there's more to rubber than just having a soft compound. You also wanna have a slow rebound property to really maximize how that works. Obviously though, the downside to having really soft tacky rubber is lifespan and rolling resistance. So if you are someone who doesn't want to replace tires as they're pretty costly very often, you might wanna look at a dual compound or even a firmer single compound tire in, I guess, extreme situations or you really know what you want, a race tire, whatever that might be. For the most part though, we stick with the 3C compound and find that they, they do a pretty good job blending all around performance and longevity. Now within the 3C family, you've also got three options being Max Grip, Max Speed, and Max Terra. Max Speed obviously is gonna be your fastest rolling tire, which means hardest rubber. Hardest rubber means, well, speed and lifespan are gonna go up. Downside is braking performance, cornering traction go down. Now, um, max grip, on the other hand, is going to prioritize grip, slower rolling speed, shorter lifespan. Depending on where you're at, the type of terrain you ride, that could be an issue or it may not be an issue. Um, but essentially, they have a, a similar construction method of running a firmer base rubber compound at the bottom and layering softer rubber high in the center and the softest rubber out on the shoulder knob. So, Kind of depending on how often you want to replace your tires and how important having the absolute most amount of grip is, that's going to really be a big deciding factor in picking the right 3C compound or dual compound tire for you. All right, so if you've made it this far, we can start talking about the different types of tread patterns. Now, when you're looking at most tires, you're going to have a center knob transition knobs, and then your shoulder knobs. And within those knobs, you're gonna have ramps, which are gonna be the angled leading edge part of that knob, which is designed to help a little bit with uh, rolling resistance and make the tire roll faster. Then you've got sipes, which are these molded cuts into each knob. Obviously, the purpose of the knob on a tire is to provide grip. And one of the ways that brands can increase surface area um, and rubber on the ground without having big, huge knobs is by putting sipes in the rubber. And what those will do is they'll actually expand. So it'll take one knob and as it hits something, it'll open up, conform, twist, open like that, and essentially increase the surface area of that knob without having to have a bigger knob. A lot of racers and pro riders will actually put their own sipes in tires. It's something that people have done forever, trying to get you know, a little bit extra traction. And it's something if you, you know, like to tweak on your own stuff, it might be worth adding a couple sipes on your own just to see how it works for your area. Obviously, when you get into looking at a tire, the, the type of knobs, the height of the knob, the way that they're laid out is going to drastically change how that bike performs on the trail. This Maxxis Minion DHF, we've done reviews of these. We've compared it to the DHR, which is a very different tire. Something that a lot of people have noticed with that Maxxis DHF is in certain types of conditions, there is a very vague float zone or a, like a kind of a drift feel before you get the side knobs fully engaged. And the reason for that is as you look down that DHF, there is a channel here. There's not a real transitional knob that gets you delicately from center to shoulder. And that is gonna give this bike a love or hate experience for some riders out there. When you 
aggressively get it over and those shoulder knobs bite, you're gonna love the tire. But getting there could be a little sketchy for some riders. Whereas if you look at another tire like the Ass Guy, you can see a big difference in the transition knobs here on the side. Now what this means is that this tire is gonna have a lot more predictive feel as you lean it over because you're going from center to transition to shoulder. The, the Ass Guy is definitely, I would say probably one of the grippiest tires out on the market and will act, just churn up earth like a rototiller. The downside to that is it is a slower rolling tire than that DHF. But as you can see, it still has solidly ramped knobs. But when it comes to choosing a tire and you're interested in rolling speed, something to remember is that the farther apart your knobs are, the more friction and slower that tire is gonna roll. If you envision, you know, truck or car tires, if you think about like a general purpose tire versus an all-terrain versus a mud terrain, when you hear a guy driving down the road with a mud terrain, you can hear that friction. Like that rubber is just slapping the concrete. Those big gaps between the lugs is inefficiency in motion. So the same applies to mountain bike tires. The tighter your knobs are, the faster that tire is going to roll. That's great on hard packed terrain, uh, when you don't need a lot of penetration, when that rubber doesn't have to get into the earth and grab to stop you, to accelerate, or to keep you making a turn. So that's where you kind of get into some of the more XC specific tires. Obviously these tires are much shorter knobs. Um, I mean, we're talking like millimeters in height versus much taller on the aggressive side. Sidewalls are gonna be thinner you know, a higher TPI count. So they're gonna be a much more supple tire. They're gonna be a lot lighter. They're gonna conform. They're gonna roll way faster. Downside is, is if you get into loose terrain or soft terrain, they're gonna lack that penetration and bite. If all out speed is what you want, then there are tires to look at in this space. This is typically though, I would say, bikes under 140 millimeters of travel and realistically probably you're looking at the you know racer hardtail to like maybe a 120 bike and uh, you you know what you want out of a tire if it's going to be this thin and this fast so there's obviously a, a lot of tires between the recon race and the Asagai, and what you're going to want is really again going to be dependent on your application and what you want out of your ride. If safety and comfort, lifespan are top priorities, you're gonna have a very different tire than someone who wants to race the clock and wants the absolute best grip and fastest, best performing tire on the market. Likewise, if you are someone who's riding on more hard pack trails, like if you're in Southern California where you're mostly riding hard pack train and you've got pretty much the same amount of traction on every bit of trail that you ride versus someone who's riding, you know, soft, loose, rich soil with some wet roots thrown in in the Pacific Northwest, your tire demand is going to be very different. Th things to consider again when you go in to make that decision are going to be sidewall stiffness and the ride quality. The rubber compound which is going to affect rolling speed and grip, then you're going to want to consider the protection from flats to weight ratio, and then you're gonna to wanna to get into your tread pattern. So more spaced out knobs, more penetration, more grip in softer soil, tighter, smaller knobs are gonna roll faster, but you're not gonna have the penetration, the braking power, or some of the other confidence inspiring traits that a more aggressive knobbier tire is going to give you. All right, hopefully that didn't feel like you sat through a lecture at school um, and you got a little bit of useful information when it comes to making a tire purchase. Obviously today we just covered Maxxis's line of tires because that took long enough and if we started bringing in everybody else's tires, we could go on for days talking about rubber. So um, pick your brand. We happen to have a great experience and use Maxxis tires quite a bit. They've been an awesome supporter of this Back to Basics series on our YouTube channel this year and thought it would be a great way to showcase how three tires in one family, the Maxxis Minion, can have such a varying degree of ride quality, price points, and lifespan. So um, you can take that and apply it to any brand you want 
any tire design you want and help make the right decision for your bike and your trails. Thank you guys for watching and we hope to see you on the next one.